You got it, Big Willy. We're going to open sauce, baby. Okay, so I have two and a half, three weeks to put something together to bring to open sauce. It has to survive the public, and I have a million other things I need to do while I'm there. I'm on a panel and doing a bunch of other stuff. So I need it to run without me. It needs to be autonomous. I need it to be cool and do something funky, and I don't have to be there babysitting. I've always wanted to turn the Lumina into like a big plotter. It's just, I wanna do something else. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a camera up behind the machine, looking out into the, the people, the crowd, and when you're ready, you hit go, there's gonna be a big button on it, and then the marker will go over and draw people out, and they can just like, like a pad of paper or something, and they get a little drawing of themselves. I have two and a half weeks and Big Willie calls, so I gotta figure it out. Okay, so first off, I need to find a way to actually have it draw with a marker. Right now I have these two little suction-y guys on the tips, and it's great for picking up parts, but it's not so good for drawing portraits, so I need to find a way to put a marker in there and have it draw on stuff. Now, a lot of plotters will just drop it on there and they'll like push it down with a servo, but I want it to be able to draw through a whole stack of paper and still be okay. So I'm gonna add a little spring in between these little guys. This part goes into the belt on the Z gantry and then this part bolts into the linear rail. So when the part on the belt slides down, it pushes into a spring and smushes it down. So there'll be a little bit of like added pressure pushing the pen down into the paper. So this is cool and it works, but as the paper goes down, the spring pushes less hard and it's kind of lame. And I accidentally shot the spring out when I was testing and then I realized that it actually works way better with just gravity. If you just like gravity, hold the marker down, it's perfect. Cool, so marker drawing, sorted. Then I had to make a mount for the camera to go on top of an aluminum extrusion that I'm bolting to the back of the machine. And also on this, I'm going to mount one of these cool little monitor doodads. This is so people can actually see what the machine is seeing them look like. So when they like how it looks, they can kick it off. So I modeled a little holder for the screen and it'll just bolt right on the same thing. And of course we need a place to hold the paper. I got a whole bunch of these pads of like four by six paper. So I made a little holster that bolts onto the staging plates. So you can just drop the pad in there, let it rip and off it goes. And then we need the button. The button is gonna connect into a little PCB I milled years ago at an old job that acts like a keyboard. So it has a microcontroller on there that when you press a certain button, it will just automatically type whatever you want it to into a computer. And I'm gonna program it so when it sees that button press, it just sends the D character right over to it. And then in the Python script that runs the whole thing, I'll have it check to here for the D key being pressed and then that's how you know it's time to draw. Cool. And at the end of the day, it all looks like this. Oh yeah. Now all that's left is software. And I hear software is easy. This shouldn't be hard at all. I certainly won't spend most of my time on the plane out to open source feverishly writing code trying to get it to work. That's not going to happen. The code has to have a live stream from the camera and show it on the screen. Okay, not too bad. That's just open CV stuff, not too bad. But then I need it to like be a cool thing to draw. Like how do I actually turn it into drawing? Okay, so I'm just gonna simplify things. I'm gonna turn it black and white. I'm gonna, let's see, I'm gonna blur it a little bit and then I'm gonna do some adaptive thresholding. So it all kind of goes black and white based on light and dark parts of what it sees. It would be kind of cool if it could find people's faces. Okay, cool. So now we got a crop into faces. That's kind of cool. And maybe even if there's multiple people, it should crop to multiple. Okay, cool there. Now it's cropping to multiple people. That's pretty good. Cool, so now I have this image, but how do I plot it? OpenCV gives me a list of blobs and all a blob is is a, just a bunch of points of the outline. So then I just kind of go through for each point. I just kind of drop that point into a line of G code, like G zero X. And then I put in the X coordinate of the point and then Y and then the Y coordinate of the point. And then it kind of is G code and I save it to a file and then I send it out. And of course, to be a corporate shill, I have to put a little bit of Opulo branding on the whole darn thing. So then I sliced using a totally different tool, the logo, the Opulo logo, and then I just have it draw it right in at the bottom. I think that's it. Let's take it open sauce.
Now this is probably the Yeah. I just got home from Open Sauce and William, thank you. Thank you for taking on the unbelievable task of organizing and putting on this whole event. Like, I know it was an event that you wanted and I'm sure that you didn't get to experience it as carefree as the rest of us did, but it was perfect. It was the perfect blend of VidCon and Maker Faire. And not only was it great to like walk around and like meet people and do the whole Maker Faire thing of seeing the booths, but getting to spend time talking to other creators, people I've been watching the videos of or briefly talk to online, but actually getting to sit down and have like a multiple hour conversation with them. Oh, it was just the best. It was just absolutely the best thing. I know it must've been unreal to put it together. Thank you for doing it. If y'all haven't already, go buy your tickets for 2024 right now. There's a link in the description. You absolutely should go buy tickets. It is one of the best events I've ever been to in my entire life. And they sell out quick, so go get one now while you can. And then after Open Sauce was done, Mark Rober invited all of the creators to go to Crunch Labs and see their huge, incredible space. It was wild checking it all out. It was really, really cool. And of course, going through the secret entry door into the whole lab, and it was awesome. So yeah, thank you, William. Thanks for asking me to come out. Thanks for putting this thing on. It was just great. Also, I have some exciting news about Opulo. We have started a podcast about open hardware manufacturing. It's all this stuff that's too like long form and drawn out to put into a video on this channel. Stuff like how do you do sourcing? How do you negotiate with vendors? How do you do shipping and certification and all that kind of stuff? We want to talk about what we found that works well. So if other people are trying to do the same thing, hopefully it'll help them out. And I met a ton of people that do open hardware at open sauce so we'll have a bunch of them coming on in the following weeks we already have two episodes out right now there's a link in the description you can go find it and it's also available anywhere you get your podcasts so go give it a listen give it a sub leave us a review it helps a ton for getting it out there so other people can find it okay that's it for me i'm gonna go sleep for four days solid thank you all so much for watching and i'll see you all next time We got a ton of awesome drawings while we were there. This is the light burn logo. <laughs> How cool is that, huh? Just an eye up close. This is a crazy t-shirt I was wearing. I think it was earlier in the video. <laughs> How cool! How cool! I'm jingly. Thank you for taking on the Herkley, Her Herkleyan, Herkley, 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 Herkleyan, Herkleyan. I don't know how the frick to say that. I learned so much about the Gunch. So much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not using that. <laughs>